Some big announcements coming from D.C.'s mayor and the D.C. Health Department within just the last hour. A state of emergency declared and recommending that large gatherings, including conferences and conventions, be postponed or canceled. Coronavirus is now in the nation's capital. The mayor's office confirmed the first case on Saturday. What Washington Metro Transit right now is trying to do is make an assessment of the overall situation. So depending on how they work with the district school children um, or district education board, Maryland and Virginia, because we service all three municipalities, that would determine like how soon or how many riders they might have. I got into Washington Metro um, with a degree in electronic engineering. I work in the power department as a high voltage technician and um, I've been there like 18 years. I normally interact with anywhere from 50 to 100 people a day, but with the COVID-19 um, um, virus going around, they have limited that dr drastically just due to the fact that we um, go went to an A, B day. So to limit our exposure, we deal with about half the people. So on a common day now, I might interact with 10, no more than 15 people. What happens is I deal with, a lot with contractors, mm -hmm. but we're within the station is where we might see anywhere from three to 500 people per train easily, we're seeing only 10 to 15 riders on a eight passenger train. There's still people that ride the Metro at this time because they're like essential workers. You might see them going to uh, their DC government jobs or stuff like that, or they might be going to, some people might be working in the um, food service industry like cooks and stuff like that. But overall, no, you don't see that many people like you wouldn't see on a normal basis. But at first you saw some people with masks and gloves, then you saw some with, without it. I guess as time went on and people learned the more seriousness of it with the death tolls in the Washington metro area, people started taking it a little more serious, so a lot more people started wearing masks. But as of this Monday, it's required that you wear a mask on all our trains, our facilities, and the buses. Yeah, I realize here in the Washington DC area, we have a lot of government employees that ride the train. So no sooner than the municipality start saying that they were going to go to a, um, more of a lockdown or stay at home status, it immediately dropped at least 95% of our ridership. So far what Washington Metro Transit has done, they have limited the exposure like to our workers, such as you might have what we call a six car train or eight car train. So what we have is like the car that's in the front and the car that's in the very rear, no one can enter that. So on an eight car train, you only have six cars in between. What they're only gonna allow in the future is no more than 20 persons per train car. That car would normally hold everywhere, anywhere from 150 to 200 persons. So as you can see is where a train car now would be at like no less than 20% capacity. So that's gonna make it kind of difficult to try to go back and service immediately. And they're talking about pushing that through the summer to see how it go probably all the way up to one year. The transit system, especially the subway, is one of the major faster ways to get around in the city because you can get on, you can bypass all the traffic, just having certain stops you go to. So with the transit being limited, therefore the tourism impact is gonna be greatly impacted because now you might have more cars, such as Ubers and Lyfts on the road, along with regular commuters. So that won't make for a good mix. But you have to look at it from a standpoint of what the CDC puts out and you have to take like guidance from the federal guidelines like that. Because being as though this is such a new pandemic, everyone's kind of caught off guard with it. Along with that, the safeguards they have now in place are social distancing. They're trying to limit the amount of customers per train. They're also requiring that you wear masks. Some people wear gloves for their own safety. Um, one of the things I would recommend is if you could, you know, do a, a fare card system where you can do it by your phone instead of touching the fare card machines or also you have some sensors where you can use the hand gels and things like that. But you gotta remember we have like 80 some stations so there might be some cost effects there or there might be other things where they might be able to get some other funding. One thing I can say is just practice a lot of common sense like wearing a mask so that way when you talk or sneeze anything like that it won't um, just come out all over the, the area of travel. Also, just try to be vigilant of your space, other spaces. If you can have some hand sanitizer with you and things like that, use that. Stay the six foot apart. And, um, you know, just try to be respectful of each other's space and 
not just because it's open, try to crowd the train because you want to ride up front, try to space it out. 